Come along with us on our adventures to observe and source spring 2022 harvest of Shanlin Shi Taiwan High Mountain Oolong Tea. Shanlin Shi is a place name uh, that is probably the most famous and definitely the earliest development of High Mountain Oolong Tea in Taiwan. Shanlin Shi is in Jushan Township in southern Nanto County and also partially in Lugu Township, the home of Dongding Oolong Tea. And the earliest uh, developers of this high mountain tea were originally tea farmers in Lugu uh, and traditional makers of Dongding Oolong Tea. Our friend is uh, heir to a family of traditional Dongding Oolong tea makers in the heart of Dongding Oolong tea country in Lugu Township. Uh, and he continues to manage his family farm and produce their traditional family recipe of tea. But in order to make a living as a tea farmer, he's been managing these high mountain plots of tea for many years now. Um, he manages the farm during the growing season and also coordinates with uh, a team of pickers to harvest each seasonal crop of tea. This spring there's about 35 pickers and ha they've been harvesting his spring crop uh, for about five days now on the day that we visited and uh, they harvested for seven days overall so not a small amount. Um, these guys are, in addition to the pickers, there's a manager of the team, there's uh, two drivers that bring the freshly picked leaves down the mountain to that valley floor below to a tea factory where they are uh, processed. Our friends believe that the lower elevation of Lugu Valley um, is more suitable and well basically ideal for processing particularly more oxidized tea leaves that will be used for the Lugu Farmers Association Dongding Oolong Tea Competition. Our friend there in blue is just uh, picking the leaves that were missed by the team of pickers um, and just coordinating with all of these people. This is just the beginning of a lot of people involved, a lot of time involved, along with years and even generations of uh, experience that have given these people the skills to be some of the best tea makers in the world, particularly this form of tea, uh, High Mountain Oolong Tea from Taiwan. So uh, the spring crop is mostly uh, on the immature side, the growing season was cooler than usual um, and it was good in the sense that uh, there was uh, sufficient rain, not too much rain, um, but the leaves just kind of grew more slowly uh, than they usually do. But they don't want to leave the leaves on the trees longer than necessary as they will begin to become a little bit tough and fibrous. So they're picking them on the slightly small side. This is ideal, uh, or at least preferred, for high mountain tea production. The leaves are tender, they do well with a, a, a minimal amount of oxidation, producing a very full flavored uh, brew uh, with uh, distinctive aftertaste qualities. It's less ideal for uh, making Dongding Oolong tea, where the leaves are manipulated more, wilted more, uh, shuffled more, and then finally roasted. So these tender leaves don't stand up to the extensive processing that is involved with Dongding Oolong production. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for our favorite uh, high mountain Oolong tea from Taiwan, this source of Shanlin Shi. Shanlin Shi was the earliest developed region in Taiwan. It's also uh, managed by some of the most experienced and skilled tea makers in Taiwan and we just find it to be our all-time favorite. We've known this uh, manager of the tea picking team for years. Uh, 
mainly from visiting this farm on a seasonal basis. So uh, we're friends by now. We live in the same town, but we only see each other during tea harvest. He's getting old in his 60s. It's uh, 1,500 meters at this uh, farm, so you start to feel the elevation a bit. But it's just, uh, it's such a nice relief to be up on the mountainside, feeling the cool fog come in. It's well before noon and the fog is already arriving. This is one of the attributes uh, of the geography of this microclimate. It gets fog on a daily basis after morning sun, which is ideal growing conditions for Taiwan oolong tea. Farms all around in this area are kind of hurriedly uh, picking their spring produce. Uh, a lot of them are producers of tea that will be used for the Lugu Farmers Association competition, but also it's just simply time to, uh, to harvest the spring produce. Leaving the leaves on the trees longer uh, will not be an asset. So here we are in the factory, late in the evening, the leaves are undergoing their final tumbling before they will set and really do their oxidation magic before they undergo tumble heating. We've learned a lot over the years of just coming up and loitering in the factory, observing being able to touch and smell the leaves as well as uh, visually observe the, their condition is really um, what's necessary in terms of getting a sense of the meaning of oxidation and uh, what they are aiming for in all of this very labor intensive and time. Uh, it's, it's an extensive amount of time that goes into m manipulating these leaves before they are fully cured. It's basically 36 hours at least between the time they are brought in from the farm and they are completely rolled and dried. And uh, being a human operation with machines that are built by humans, uh, stuff goes wrong. Accidents happen. The, that metal rack of shelving had a malfunction, the motor started uh, kind of skipping and stripping, so we had to take the leaves down off the higher racks manually by pulling the tarps that are spread onto the racks uh, down by hand, standing on ladders, um, definitely losing time when time is of essence, but uh, teamwork made it happen. and. Um, yeah, we stayed up all night in this factory and uh, finally laid down up on the mountainside in our car, actually, uh, for a nap before dawn. This is the very last of the leaves undergoing uh, what would be uh, solar withering. And they had had solar withering earlier before the sun went down. But basically, at this temperature, the same effect happens after the initial kick of uh, being exposed to sunlight, where it's just a slow and most importantly, steady uh, depletion of moisture in the leaves. So when the, la the last of the leaves come in from the farm, it takes a little longer because the sun is not as strong and now it's dark out. So they have to be wilted for uh, probably twice as long as when they are exposed to sunlight. These guys can do this in their sleep, I'm sure. They've done it so many times. In one harvest, you know, they've been working for a week straight now uh, just to cure the leaves from one farm. And often the workers that are not owners of their own farms uh, basically rotate from farm to farm and factory to factory, helping other tea producers cure their produce. That room that he just closed the door of is air, uh, climate controlled, air conditioned. They want to keep the temperature and the humidity uh, at the ideal 
um, level so that the leaves are oxidized uh, the way they want them to be. So now it's about two in the morning and uh, the pots are being fired up. These are gas fired pots. They're heavy steel. Uh, you can see that they're turning at a pretty decent rate. That's all depending on how, what kind of tea you're making and who the master um, tea fryer, so to speak, is. We've seen this guy in action for uh, the last few years in a row at least, consistently hired by our friend to do the very crucial step of uh, cease oxidation or sa ching, where the leaves are exposed to high temperature. The naturally occurring enzymes within the leaves are um, deactivated and a lot of the moisture is removed from being tumbled uh, at this high temperature. So they're going into the pots at, with about 70% moisture and they're coming out with about 30 or 40% left. After being steamed in a box, uh, they are put in that half moon roller just for a few minutes, gently rolled and then put into the conveyor belt dryer. The conveyor belt dryer in this situation is strictly to air out the leaves um, and remove any surface moisture from them before they're bundled up and allowed to redistribute their moisture. And here we are picking up our share finally. A few days later, the harvest is done. We reserved our pick and we're taking it down the mountain to be packaged in smaller packs in order to be shipped to you. A beautiful traditional home here, uh, the home of our closest tea farmer friend really, with whom we communicate the most and learn the most from in recent years. A very good start to 2022. We're happy with the spring teas that we've sourced so far, including this batch of Shanlin Shi High Mountain Oolong Tea from Lugu and Jushan Townships. Check it out.